This is a quick run through on how to set up a YouTube teacher account from within your Ignatius Apps Domain uh, email account. So assuming that you are already logged into your email, when you see your inbox, the place to start is to go to the More button, similar to what you would see with Haiku and other services, and click the Even More link at the bottom of that list. From that list, if you locate YouTube on the left-hand column and click there, you'll be taken to YouTube and asked to create an account. If you click Create Account, what you'll notice is that you will automatically be signed in and authenticated by your email address. You may actually be prompted to log in again but log in with your same email credentials at Ignatius and you'll automatically be signed into YouTube. Now when you go to YouTube and it asks you to sign in if you need to upload or manage your account you can log in with your Ignatius email. So from the upper right hand corner you can see a number of different things about your account. You can see your settings or sign out which you should always do when you're done with YouTube. Uh, and you can also see an inbox or anything else that's related to your particular account right from this drop down in the upper right hand corner. So to get started creating your teacher channel the first step is obviously to log in to your YouTube account and you do not need to log into your email first you can go straight to YouTube and log in with your email username and password but then go to that upper right hand corner click to expand your account details and then go to channel the next step, if you haven't set up a channel yet, is to create a new channel and establish a username. So you can click the Make Me a New Channel button. It will ask you for a username. This you can specify, and it could be something like Mr. Jark's Videos or Mr. Jark or something like that. Uh, you may need to scrunch that to get rid of punctuation and um, spaces and dashes and things like that. Um, I'm going to actually shorten that to see if I can just do Mr. Jark. Okay, but I'll pick kind of a variation. As you can see, it'll give you a, uh, a list of uh, alternatives there. And then location, and date of birth, you could specify or you could make something up entirely. Um, this is age f to uh, verify age-appropriate content. And then just some demographics there. Uh, these two settings here let others find my channel if they have my email address that might be good to turn on uh, so your students can find you easily and then send occasional YouTube product email that's probably something you want to uncheck so you don't get spammed by YouTube and click next would we'll take a second to set up your channel and this is where you would log in again with your same uh, email username and password and what it would do is then link your YouTube account to, to your YouTube channel account which is essentially the same thing but requires at least that first authentication okay and so then it will give you a confirmation there that Mr. Jark One's YouTube username and channel is associated with my Ignatius email address okay so from there you can upload videos or you can also start customizing your channels page and that's where we're going to start in part two. So once you have your account set up, uh, it's easy enough to get going with your channel. So in part two of the series, we're going to take a look at how to customize your individual channel page. So assuming that you have logged in, you've established your account, the next time you come back to YouTube, you'll see a screen that looks similar to this. When you're logged in, it will show your username in the upper right hand corner and then just the general activity from your account anyone that's subscribed to you or recommended your channel you'll be notified here if you go to the upper right where your username is and you click there it will show you some account details and this is where we want to access our channel so if you ever forget exactly where to go to find your channel you can go to your username in the upper right click there expand that menu and then click channel to view your channel so some of the ideas in creating a YouTube channel, first if you have a lot of your own videos that you want to post, it's a good idea to save them to a channel so they're all sortable by username. 
Additionally, if you have student projects that you want to publish and keep somewhat uh, some kind of control over, you can post those on your YouTube channel and decide how they're published and who has access to them. Additionally, which many teachers might find useful, is something called videos and playlists, where if you show a lot of videos in your classes, but you want to separate them by content area or by topic or by uh, by course, you could certainly create a playlist similar to what you would do in iTunes or another music player and find uh, videos from around the web and put them into playlists. And then you can uh, embed those playlists on your Haiku page or send links of playlists to your students. So once you're into your channel, you can do a number of different things uh, to your channel to help customize it. You could add a welcome message if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to skip that for now, actually, and that would show up in the bulletin section. You could enter a particular start your uh, start video URL if you'd like, and then post that bulletin there. Um, down in the lower half of this section is what your channel will look like once your students uh, or viewers just log in. You'd see subscribers and friends, and then other videos and playlists once you get some of those going. So we look back up to the top of the screen. There's some other things you might want to help. Uh, access to customize your channel. First is settings. You notice the URL. That's the direct link to your channel. So if you needed to post that to your Haiku page or to your other website, you could certainly grab that from right there. You could give it a title that's more appropriate. And then the channel type is going to be, you know, YouTuber, which is just for general. Make channel visible, yes, if you wanted to put other channel tags about school or about your course or about uh, the individual content, you could separate them here uh, in channel tags, separated by spaces. So then each time you make a change, hit save, and you see those, um, get that confirmation message that your settings were changed. Uh, the next option would be themes and colors, and so you do have some options here for setting the overall look and feel of your page. If you pick a general color scheme that you like, you can always start with that. And then there are some advanced options that might be a little bit more useful. So if you wanted to choose a dark channel or a light channel theme, just go ahead and click on that and then again save any changes that you might want to save there. If I return to that themes and colors menu and go to show advanced options, one of the other things that's nice is that if the theme is basically what you want but with a few tweaks, like I don't really like that, uh, gray color, I'd actually like that to be a little bit more uh, more friendly. I could come up here and click on on these colors and create a, a new theme based on uh, new colors that I would select. The other option here is to use a background image and that could be something that could repeat over and over again in your background instead of just a solid color. So that might be a nice way to customize your look and feel. So there are some restrictions here. You want to make sure that your background channel image is a maximum of 250K for the file size. So there's some utilities that are listed in your documentation where you can go to create a background tile or a background image or some resources to use to resize an image so that's the proper size. Then all you would need to do is click Browse to bring up an interaction with your computer. Then you could browse to your image directory or desktop wherever you have that file saved click on it and click open and then it would repeat in your background. So if we are done making some customized changes to your layout, you can click save changes and that would update any of your looks, any of your changes that you made. Additionally, you do have some uh, modules that run in your YouTube channel to help you stay in contact. Uh, you can do video commenting, uh, you can list your subscribers, you can have event dates or other channels that you uh, are subscribed to as a part of your uh, your own YouTube channel. So you can make these settings as you feel appropriate. If we slide over to videos and playlists, that's where we're gonna make the, uh, the most changes here. So for the teacher YouTube page, one of the suggestions that I would make is to turn on playlists. And that would be an easy way for your students to get access to YouTube videos that you recommend for a particular content area or for a particular class, and that's a good way to separate them and then turn around and embed them into your Haiku page. So if we check off Show Playlists, down the road a little bit, once you have your playlist actually created, 
you can select multiple playlists or all playlists that you would like to show on your YouTube channel. Since we don't have any here to display, it's not going to let us do that just yet. But if we go ahead and, and save those changes, we can actually start making, uh, making a playlist from here. So once you have your YouTube channel established and your account established, the easiest way to get going is to start creating playlists and managing your videos. And it's very easy to do. They, assuming you have logged in already, you don't need to go to your channel. You can actually start looking for videos. So I just put in a random search query like Beowulf and up comes videos. Let's say you wanted to use your uh, add the Beowulf trailer to one of your channels. Simply enough, you go to browse to that video, oops, browse to that video just like you would any other time. But this time, since you are logged into YouTube, you'll see an add to button here. And if I click that, you'll see favorites, watch later, or new playlist. And what I want to do in this case is start a new playlist. It's just going to open a little blank for me. And I'm going to type in English 1 and click enter, or hit enter on my keyboard and you'll see a couple of things happen. First it says save to your playlist but then down at the bottom of the screen a little semi-transparent bar now appears with English 1 playlist listed right there. So that's coordinating with your individual YouTube channel right here and then you do have some options too as to save as a new playlist or copy it, put in some tags or more information about the playlist or switch between multiple playlists which uh, which we'll do in just a second. So if we go back to the search query, and in this time, instead of Beowulf this time, let's put in something, something random like Transformers. Uh, so this would be just the way that you search for the videos that you want to start organizing, and maybe you've got a collection of URLs that you're already managing. And in that case, you could actually just go straight to the YouTube URL and then look at the video, go to the Add To, but in this case, we're going to start another playlist. Okay, movie trailers, and then again, hit enter. Hit say save to your playlist. You see the new playlist added right here. Now I'll just repeat the process. I'll go to a different trailer, Kung Fu Panda, pause the video, go down to add to, select movie trailers, and you see how that list is automatically updated as you add new channels. So as that playlist is added, then it pops up transparent down here in the bottom. I could go down and just, you know, repeat this process for multiple videos as I as I saw fit. So I'll select add to, go to movie trailers, boom, there it comes again. Now I've got three play uh three items added to my my um, movie trailers playlist. So then if I go up to the upper right where my account is and slide over to uh, to my channel, what you'll see is a number of different things. YouTube makes it makes it easy to see the playlist that you've saved, how many e uh, videos in each playlist you have, and then also view details. So for English 1, if I click view details, this is where you can add some information to your playlist that might help your students or might help qualify the information that's in your channel. So just by clicking edit, you can see those details and you've got a 5,000 character limit for your uh, information here. Then same thing with the videos, you can edit those uh, titles and sort of details, rearrange them in the list just by dragging right there and then of course hit save. If I go to my channel and then view details for my movie trailers playlist, you can see that there are now three videos there. If I clicked edit, I could add a description there and also if I scroll down a little bit, I can drag to rearrange the videos in my playlist so maybe a different order is more appropriate. So then you can make that public or private depending on how you want to have it used and viewable. Uh, you can use this as an official series if you wanted to do this for uh, some videos that your students would produce. Might be a nice idea. And then allow others to embed it, yes or no, that's a decision you can make on your own. So then you can click Save. So once you have your channel set up, if you visit your channel after you have uh, some playlists going, you'll see now down towards the bottom you have some recent activity. And this is the time where we can go back to videos and playlists, check off to display playlists, check off which playlists we would like to display, 
and click Save Changes. And then now you can actually see when somebody visits your YouTube channel, over on the right hand side you'll see Uploads and Favorites, and then your two playlists that you just created and managed, Movie Trailers and English One. So in the last part in this series we'll take a look at how to take these channels and embed them in your Haiku account. So the last piece in the series on creating your YouTube channel is to publish your channel to your website or in this case to your Haiku page. So you have a number of different options. You can post videos from your channel, you can post playlists from your channel, or you can post a link directly to your channel. So we'll look over those three methods. So assuming that you've logged into your Haiku page, the easiest way to go is to add a content block. And again, decide how you want to add the videos to your page. If you want to do just a link to your channel, you could click web links. And to figure out what your channel URL is, you can simply browse to your channel, log in, view your channel by going to the upper right again, click on your account and then click channel. And your channel would display. You can grab this URL from your browser and copy that. Swing back over to Haiku and paste. And you'll notice that it puts a little uh, extra on the end. All you need at the end of the URL is your username. So it should read youtube.com slash user slash and then whatever your username is. And then you can type in whatever you'd want to appear for that link. Uh, YouTube channel link. Okay, so that would give the students just a direct link to to your channel, so it would open in a new browser window. Uh, if you wanted to embed one or the other of your playlists, you'd go about that in a slightly different method. So the first step would be to look at your channel. So once you're looking at your uh, YouTube channel, the way to start embedding your playlists into your Haiku page is to browse to the playlist first. So the easiest way to do that is to slide over to playlists and click on one of the playlists that you want it to view. If you click edit that playlist, what you should see is a familiar enough screen. This would allow you to reorder your videos, make additions, subtractions, etc. from there. If you click on the link at the top on the name of your playlist. This is the public view of your playlist. You could either choose play all if you wanted to review your videos or in this case we want to share this playlist. So we're going to click the share button and you have a few options. Again you have a link directly to this page or this list. You can obviously share that on Facebook or Twitter or uh, Google Plus. Uh, or you can email the video playlist, or in this case, we actually want to embed it. So we're going to take this playlist that we've created and pull it into Haiku using this embed code. So you click the embed button, YouTube would produce some code for you. You can set some options first, which might be more appropriate depending on where you're placing it. For Haiku, I'm going to choose the next size up with its 640 by 360, which will fit nicely on the page. I'm going to choose play in HD and you notice that form factor changed. If I do that, in this case, these training videos are not going to fit on the screen properly. So I can actually undo that or rechange the size but still play in high definition. So you might want to be cautious of how wide your videos are depending on how wide the page is putting them on. So once you have the code set correctly, just simply right click and choose copy then that will copy to the clipboard and you can swing back over to your Haiku page then we're going to go to add content block and some people might think you go straight to YouTube well that's only for a single video block so what we're actually going to use is embed the web so you click embed the web and at the top you've got a place to paste source code or you could go to the quick add tab and that would do the same thing 
it says paste the embed code from the website of your choice. There you click, right click again and choose paste and it'll pull that code straight from YouTube. And you can see in the code that the width is 640 by 360 just as we set it. And then it has some uh, code here that will link to your uh, YouTube channel. And what it will actually do is pull it in as an iframe. So it'll pull it in line on your Haiku page. So you can click next. Give it a block title like Haiku training videos. So that would be specific to the content area or to the playlist that you just made. You could add a description. You could choose where it goes or you could read the code again if you needed to make some edits. And then you could click save. Okay, now the advantage of pulling in the channel is a couple of, uh, of things here. Towards the bottom you have a link here to bring up that transparency window that would actually show all of the videos that are in that channel. You could pop it out and view it on YouTube if you wanted to, or you could add it to your watch later list. This would also, uh, this button here would allow you to pop it out into full screen. So just by clicking the play button in the middle, it would bring that video right in line. In this brief overview of the Haiku. Okay, so that's how to embed the channel, or I should say embed the playlist in your Haiku page. Down here we still have that link there and then uh, just as a refresher if you wanted to pull in one individual video from your channel if you swing back over to your channel and click that particular video to show the uh, video you know as you would normally watch it on YouTube you have the share link down here at the bottom if I scroll down just a little bit and bring that up a little higher there's where you have the direct link to the video and then you have the embed code right there which is what we'll use again if I scroll down some more you have the same options for sizes in HD um, and we can grab that code swing back over to Haiku add a, another content block and in this case we're still going to use embed the web because we're using embed code to pull the video in click quick add right click in the code block and paste and then click next again give it a description so this might be the single video you know whatever it might be give it a description and click save so then again you're gonna see some of the same options here you're gonna see the play button right in the middle add to watch later pop out on YouTube or go to full screen but what you don't see is that playlist option down here where you can show or hide the rest of the videos from the playlist. So that might be an easy and convenient way to pull in a couple of videos <clears throat> onto your Haiku page. In this case we may want to actually divide the page into two even columns in the page layout and then maybe pull these video blocks even next to each other. Whatever is convenient for you as far as the layout goes. Okay, So just drag to rearrange. So that's an overview of how to create your YouTube channel, add some playlists, and then embed those playlists on your Haiku page. Uh, so I hope that's been of use for you, and I uh, hope you can get something out of your YouTube channel. See you next time.